Hey, hey, my beautiful boss women. How is your Tuesday? Let me know below. How's it going? How are you? What's going on for you right now? A um, couple of little side notes while I wait for a couple of you to jump on. Um, awesome stuff happening in Bosswoman world right now. Fourth Bosswoman order launched yesterday. So if you have not seen that already, hey, Shirley. Um, if you have not seen that already, please um, jump into the announcements of the group and you will see all of them there. If you've got any questions, you can ask. Hey, Catherine, how are you? I was talking about you this morning, giving you a pump up and your pocket stylist Facebook group to one of my clients who desperately needs some of your help. <laughs> um, all right. So I wanted to do you guys um, this video because I've had a couple of conversations with some of my online clients this morning, which by the way, as another side note, I have one spot left for my four week intensive before the end of the year. How exciting is that? Completely full schedule leading into Christmas, Woo -woo! which means there are so many women getting their shit together, making shit happen. I actually just had one woman before she messaged me to say she's lost three kilos since working with me, which was four weeks ago. Plus she's been on tour for singing and enjoying some beers and having some late nights. So how freaking amazing is that, right? You can still enjoy your social life. You can still enjoy the things that you do. It's about working smarter than harder. So um, if you are interested in that last spot, please private message me. That's not what this video is about though. This video is about when you are being a control freak and you're setting goals. Now, um, let me just bring this up one second so I can see the comments. Say hello as you jump on. Let me know how you're doing. Um, where are we? All right, cool. So a couple of goal setting tips for you. All right, and um, thank you very much to the clients that I had this morning. They brought this to my attention and how much they are their goals are negatively driven. And what do I mean by this? Negatively driven, negatively driven goals. I don't want to be this, or I don't want to do this, or I want to not da, 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 right? Insert whatever it is that your goal is. So for example, if you're looking at, hey, Caroline, how you going? For example, if you are looking at your body and it's like, I want to stop eating, sugar. I want to stop drinking so much. I want to stop. I want to not um, spend all my money. I want to not da da da. I don't want to. I want to stop. I want to not. Are all negatively driven goals, right? They are all negatively driven goals, right? So what happens is when you set negatively driven goals, in fact, when you set any goals, what we do is we attract energy to those goals. Now, your subconscious mind doesn't really register negatives, right? And it kind of drowns it out in the background. I'm not going to go into the science or the information behind this, but this is what happens. So when you say, and I'll give the classic one, which is like, I don't want to be fat anymore, right? I don't want to be fat. Your brain is like, I want to be fat. I want to be fat. I want to be fat, right? That's what happens on a subconscious level. And because you're so focused on not being fat or being fat, right? Because you're so focused on that, you are creating more energy around fat. So you're attracting more energy around being fat. So what happens is you start to filter your world. Hey, Rachel, um, you start to filter your world based on, I don't want to be fat. I also want to give the um, example that one of my clients used this morning, which was, I don't, um, oh, what was it? I don't want, oh my God, I just wrote this down somewhere. Um, it was around being money. So um, I don't want to keep running my money habits. I don't want to keep my bad money habits. I don't want to keep my mad, bad money habits. So unconsciously, your brain is like, I want to keep my bad money habits. And then because you're so focused on bad money habits, bad money habits, bad, and it, it continuously reels over and over again, that's the last thing that your brain takes in. So you're constantly focused on bad money habits. Cool? So then you start to filter the world. 
Oh, I don't want to spend that because I, I don't want to I don't want to keep up my bad money habits. You're constantly thinking about your bad money habits. Subsequently, what you're doing is driving energy to your bad money habits. Same with food, right? Um, and food, money. Uh, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to date any more assholes. I don't want to date any more assholes. It's the same thing. It's just dressed differently in different realms of your life. I'm getting so worked up about this. I'm getting so hot. I need to take my jumper off. <laughs> it just happens when I get passionate. All right, here we go. Whew. So, when you're continuously focusing on something that you don't want, you're continuously focusing on it. Are you guys with me? Give me some thumbs up, some love hearts if you're feeling me. If you're watching this on a replay, please do hashtag replay so that I know that you've seen it. Um, and you can let me know what some of your negatively driven goals are. Okay, so if we're continuously focusing on all the things that we don't want, thank you for the hearts. Um, if we're continuously focusing on something we don't want, we are creating energy around it. Thanks, Naomi. I couldn't see who did it and the laptop tells me. Hey, Lisa. Um, so we're continuously creating energy around the things that we don't want. Therefore, we just so have it, um, we just so happen to become more focused on the things that we don't want instead of the things that we do want, right? Now, what happens from there? You can easily change this into a goal that is positively driven. You can easily change this to be positively framed by looking at your statement. So look at your statement and ask yourself, how can I make this more of a positive statement? What do I want instead of what I don't want, right? Because we want to drive focus to what it is that we do want so that we can cultivate energy and momentum around what it is that we're working towards, we're creating, and we want for ourselves. Now, you'll be able to relate to this um, either by the body example, by the money example, even the dating game, right? I did this for a while, especially those of you who know um, like my dating story, which I should get on and tell that again soon. Um, so what happens is I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want that. You create all this energy around it. Hey, Peter, it doesn't even tell me you're on live. Facebook is nuts. Um, how are you? So when we focus on those things, we don't want, we create energy around it and we invite more of that in because you are more focused on it. You're closing the door. So you're closing the door on all the things that are possible for you and all the things that you do want because you're so goddamn focused on making the things that you don't want, making sure they don't happen. They're naturally going to happen because you're putting energy towards them because you're so focused on them, right? And it, it sounds so simple and it really can be very, very simple. However, you've got to become aware of your language. You've got to become aware of what you're actually saying, like what is coming out of your mouth when you're telling people. So I would encourage you over the next couple of days is to ask yourself the question, what do I want for myself? Now, most of you will find, because most humans are negatively driven, uh, myself included, right? And it takes a lot of practice, a lot of self-coaching and a lot of fucking self-awareness to become aware of the things of what is coming out of your mouth because that is what you are allowing to create energy around, which is currently creating your reality. It is easy to change your reality if you first become self-aware. This is why I love teaching my women about self-awareness, right? If you know you like the back of your hand, you can work with you, right? But if you're not conscious, if you're just like speaking or whatever, and you're not even consciously aware, of what is coming out of your mouth, the actions that you're taking, the behaviors that you run, if you are not consciously aware of those things, you don't have the power to change them. Do you understand this? You don't have the power to change it if you are not first aware of what it is that needs to change. Then when we're not consciously aware of the things that we're doing, we start to ask questions with ourselves like, fuck, like, why do I keep ending up in this situation? Like, how does this keep happening to me? Why do I keep putting the weight on? Why have I got no savings? Why do I keep meeting assholes? 
why why do I feel so tired all the time? Why so you start to ask all these questions like why, 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 why? And you start to seek answers externally, which by the way, if you're on my email list, you would have got one hell of a freaking email this morning. I was just like typing like this. I had so much to say with so much like passion. It was almost like fiercely kind of, I don't know, it was like fiercely powerful doing it. <laughs> um, there was a little part of me that was like, all right, where is this coming from, Eliza? Like, is this, is this like empowering? Is this inspiring? Or are you just motherfucking angry? And then I, I sat with it for a little while, read back through it, tweaked a few things. And I was like, nah, this feels good. Feels good, right? Um, because sometimes it just literally like flows out of me like verbal diarrhea and it's just like, ah. um, and I love, I love, love, love when that happens. So anyway, side note. So in order for you to be able to um, become consciously aware, this is about you starting to um, listen to the words that you're saying. Think about the um, actions that you're taking or the behaviors that you're running. And every time you ask yourself that question, like, how do I keep ending up here? Why does this keep happening? Why do I feel so stuck? Listen to what you're saying to other people, right? What do you whinge about? What do you bitch and moan about all the fucking time, right? What do you complain about? What makes you angry and pissed off? You know, because it's on repeat. It'll be a story that you're running. First point, change your language, right? Anyway, bringing it back to the goal side of topics, because I really have so much to say right now, and I want to kind of try and keep this live stream reasonably short, so people will listen through this. Um, the so round your goals first thing negatively driven if they're negatively driven you got to change that to a positively driven goal right so i don't want this there's no problem with writing that list about what you don't want what i want you to do next to it is write what you do want i want you to write what you do want now what you do want and if you're a control freak right? Um, and maybe I might do this in a second video as well, right? So if you are a control freak in your life, which 90% of you in here will be, um, and 90% of you listening to it because control makes us feel like we are in power, like we, um, like we, we have control, like we can control everything, our lives, how things happen, how we show up, da, da, da. The only thing you can control realistically is how you show up in life and how you respond to the things that happen to you in your life, right? To a certain extent, you can control things, but we can't control everything. So for my beautiful control freaks, yes, I am a former control freak, still managing my control freakness, right? Because I'm just inherently built that way. Yeah, I've always been like that. So changing that pattern is like an ongoing lesson. And it's cool. I learn so much shit every day from things that I try to control that is totally outside my control. Um, and I'm totally open about all of this. And the cool thing about that is all my clients are bloody control freaks and everyone that generally um, watches my stuff can relate to me in some le way, shape or form, right? Hey, Prue, how are you going? When you are a control freak and you set yourself a goal that you want something, right? So it's like, I want to have $10,000 savings in my account in the next three months, or I want to lose 10 kilos in the next two months. I want to find a boyfriend in by the end of the year. I want to have a house by July, 2020. I want to, or I want, um, I want to compete next year. I want to, I'm trying to think of some live examples of people recently. Oh, uh, I want to have a healthy lifestyle, whatever the fuck that means. Cause it's totally not specific whatsoever. So what does that really look like? Dig a layer deeper. Um, I want to... 
I'm going to stop with that, right? So I want all these things. Now, control freakness will see you lay out a plan, especially if you love a to-do list or a plan and you go away and you map it all out and you get your roadmap and you're like, da, 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 yep, awesome. Like, you know, so if I want to save $10,000 in three months, if I break that down into three, it's something like 3000 333.5 or something, right? Whatever, bad example of my mathematics. So if you were to do that, so I need to earn that every month for the next three months. Now, what happens if for some reason that you weren't able to make any money one of those months, right? What that does is you either put pressure on yourself to then be like, well, fuck, I've got to make this money there. And then, but this isn't going to plan. This is not what it looked like. You become fixated on focused on what it is that your actual plan is. So you become obsessed with the how and it's like, fuck, I'm not tracking with my goal. Or if I want to lose 12 kilos in three months and four kilos each month, but the first month you didn't lose it. You ended up getting sick. Something got in the way. Something terrible happened. Something blah, blah, blah. Right? Right. And then it's like, oh, well, I ha it's been one month and I haven't even reached my goal, right? It starts to create a lot of stress. If you are um, a person that is innately hard on yourself, right? It's like, well, what the fuck? If you can't do that in a month, what makes you think you can do that in three, right? Or it's like, shit, now I've got to work harder. So you make it harder for yourself. You put the hard word on yourself to work harder to get it to happen, right? All whilst you're creating this enormous amount of stress in the background, right? You're putting so much pressure on yourself. You're restricting yourself like a mofo. So not only didn't you not make it in the first month, you're now like trying to double up on the other months and you're trying to you're mad at yourself for not making it happen. And then it doesn't look the way that you wanted it to look. So you're already failing. And then what are you going to do now? And then all of a sudden it's like, ah, yeah, right? Sometimes it's not about knowing the how. Sometimes the how doesn't freaking matter. Oh, sorry message. Um, sometimes the how doesn't matter, right? It's actually, and this is like manifesting, yeah? Manifesting and calling in what it is that you want for yourself. It's not about figuring out the roadmap or the how down to a finer detail to, you know, in the, all these controlled measures so that you can make it happen. It's not about that. It's about believing in yourself that it will happen Ideally, in the fantasy world of if everything ran smoothly, we would love it to happen like this. Yeah, I would love it to happen like this. That would be wonderful. Amazing. If you are my control freak, sometimes we make our goals, our expectations. So it's like, sweet, well, this is what I want. And now this is what I expect of myself. When you have your expectations so high, you're a control freak and you don't know how to let go or you have not practiced letting go, right? Or you're so fixated on the how instead of just believing that you'll get there. It creates major, 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 major levels of disappointment. Because as soon as you get into your goal doesn't live up to your expectation, right? As soon as it doesn't live up to your expectation, you feel disappointed. Now, what happens when you feel disappointed? You feel like a failure. You feel like you're fucked up. You feel like you're not on track, that you should have been able to do it. Why couldn't you have done it? Instead of actually zooming out and being like, hey, girlfriend, a lot happened last month. Is that real? Was that really realistic for you to achieve that in that month? Did I do the best that I could do? If, hell yeah, I did. I did. Then awesome. Trust that. Move on to what you can do the following, right? It's when we set big long-term goals. And I did a video on this the other week about like, fuck the decade goals. Like I've seen so many coaches talking about, oh, what did you set out for last decade? What are you setting out for this decade? Are you serious? 
Like, and this would have been me years ago, right? So I understand it. And that's why I feel like I have quite an opinion on it. When you look at the last 10 years, like if I had to think about the next 10 years, I can't control all of that shit. I don't know what's going to happen next year. What's going to happen in two years, three years, five, let alone freaking 10 years. So whilst sometimes it's fun setting decade goals or a five, 10 year plan and a five year plan and a three year plan and a 12 month plan and a six month plan, especially when you go and make a 10 year goal, right? And then you spend the time to then break it down to five, to three, to one, to six months, to three months, to one month. Right, for me to get to my 10 year goal, um, I need to do this monthly for the next 10 years. What if you decide that you don't even want that goal next year? What if you decide that you want to change your lifestyle? You don't like what you're doing every month. Sometimes when we get so fixated on that end result, right? And we, you know, I have heard some people say things like, you know, I hold integrity in my word or if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I used to say that as well. And to be honest with you, that shit will fuck you up, <laughs> right? I said I would do it, so I'm going to do it. So immediately I put all this pressure on myself to do all these things that I say I'm going to do. Well, in the last two years, I learned that I say I'm going to do a lot but I didn't actually realistically think about how that would fit into my life. And in turn, and in fact, I didn't have enough time to do all of that, let alone half of it. What do I know about myself? I am highly ambitious. I am highly driven. I sometimes live with my head in the clouds and I think that all of these things, I can get them done in five minutes and I, I get excited and I like, you know, I say I want a lot of things all the time where it's like, you know, I'm creating this and I'm doing that and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. If I held on to every little thing that I said that I was going to do, I would have had at least 10, well, I reckon way more than 10 mental breakdowns. It would be fair to say 10 mental breakdowns in the last 12 months if I had not learned to let go of some of those things. If I had not learned to let go of figuring out the how all the freaking time, right? And it's like, cool, like in 10 years, yeah, awesome. This is what I'm, my, uh, this is what it would be cool for my life to look like. Amazing. Awesome. What do I want now? Right? Because the person I am now and at the rate of my growth and evolution <laughs> at the moment, which is like, I don't know if you guys have been watching my other video, which was Carl. I've been changing my stuff up like I changed my underwear. Because what happened? I started to realize that, shit, there's a lot of things in my life right now that do not serve me. Why are you doing them, Eliza? Oh, because, I don't know, because my clients wanted to or... Um, and that's, you know, my nature. I want to help people, right? So it's important for me to be able to check myself before I say yes to somebody else and give them what they want without making sure that it feels good for me. Does that make sense? So, I've been like culling things that don't feel good for me, right? Or that I've been doing them just for other people instead of it actually being for myself as well. That's a process in itself, but every time you shed a layer or every time you give to yourself some more, it encourages you to wanna to give to yourself some more. So in the last couple of weeks for myself, what I have done is actually changed a lot of things. I've let go a lot of things that don't serve me anymore. And then asking myself the question, what can I let go of today? Right? Or what, what do I want for myself today? All right? Or how do I, what do I want for myself this week? Instead of being so future focused, if you set a goal that is five years away, Right? If you set a goal that is five years away, and I'll give a classic example, just one more example. Sorry, I'm like way, I'm so revved up right now. So um, 
and I don't know why I'm apologizing for that. I don't need to apologize. I've got people still on here. So obviously we're still listening. Woohoo! Um, I, um, have like a real life example is around like a, um, past client of mine wanting a child, wanting a baby, right? Um, with no partner. So how do you think the pressure of that is going to look like? I want to, I want to have a baby by the time I'm 30, right? I want to have a baby by the time I'm 30. Cool. But I want to have it with somebody that I'm in a relationship with. I want to be engaged by the time I'm 30. You know, all of this kind of like age bracket goals that really just put pressure on yourself. So imagine that your goal is that you want to have a baby by the time you're 30 or 40 or whatever, right? And you're still single. And then you start to go out and date. But you're on a time limit because you've got this fixated goal in your in your mind that you want to have a baby by the time you're 30. Yeah? How do you think you're going to filter through your dates? Oh, is he is he father material? Oh, could this guy be the one? Could this all this pressure and expectation comes around it rather than actually just being in the moment and being present to see where that takes you? Yes, it would be ideal for me to have a baby by the time I'm 30, right? However, if it doesn't work that way, that's cool. I know it's going to happen eventually, right? And I just trust that that will happen. Hey, Amber, how's it going? Um, I've been ranting for quite some time now, so you might need to watch it back. 25 minutes. Woo woo! Um, so I'm giving those examples, right? Also, too... When you put all these pressure and expectation on yourself to achieve these things and you don't, I want you to ask yourself, what is it that you're saying to yourself when you don't achieve them? What is it that, how do you treat yourself when you don't reach a goal? Like goals, can, they don't, they can be written in gray lead. They don't have to be written in cemented pen. Yeah. And the ability for you to be able to learn to let go is so vital to your happiness because if you're so laser focused on something that you must have, you're going to miss all the beautiful opportunity around you. Cool. All right. So that's it for me now. I'm going to keep it under 30 minutes and um, I will see you guys real soon. Thank you very much for listening. If you're watching back, please hashtag replay. Amber, you might have to go back to the start and um, guys have a great day. Bye.